It was not defiance only that made me study my mother so. Although our cat and mouse games did become a kind of battle, it was also because she, with a deliberation bordering on the unseemly, set herself apart from what a woman should be and was as surprising as a flood or a brush fire. She had a will and a demeanor as forceful as a church deacon's. The passage of time and layer upon layer of misfortune had only worked to stiffen the fabric of her being. I first remember hearing about Martha Carrier and the Carrier family legends from my mother and my grandmother. They were talking about an ancestor who'd been hanged as a witch in Salem, and it took me a little while to realize that they were talking about a woman who'd been hanged 350 years ago. Her name was Martha Carrier, and she was called by Cotton Mather the Queen of Hell. As far as I know, she was the only woman to stand up to her judges and accusers alike and went to her death unrepentant. My family was enormously proud of being descended from an accused witch. My grandmother used to say that Martha Carrier was not a witch, just a ferocious woman. It was a sense of stubborn pridefulness that we were strong-willed, outspoken, and quite stubborn at times. I've thought about the Carrier family and Martha Carrier for a long time. The story has been with me my whole life and I felt that the book was, in essence, a love story to my family and a tribute to the men and women who died so bravely, professing their innocence and embracing death rather than a lie. I spent five years researching The Heretic's Daughter, trying to give an accurate depiction of the time and place, to give it an atmosphere that was authentic. And I wove in family legends. Good historical fiction, I think, balances fiction and fact and brings a lot of emotion through the pages. The leaves of autumn that October of 1692 were gold and red like the blood of martyrs and so suffused with color that it assaulted our prison blind eyes like a fiery rod. We stood blinking and cringing at the outer door, not knowing whether to go forward or turn back, too weak at first to descend the few steps into the prison yard on our own. My brothers and I were the last to appear at the door, and slowly, slowly, we could see, appearing through the sharp light, figures standing motionless in the prison yard.